Hey, what is zero knowledge proof? Interesting question. Zero knowledge proof is a cryptographic technique that allows one party, the prover, to demonstrate to another party, the verifier, that they possess knowledge of a particular piece of information without revealing the actual information itself. Boring. I can read Wikipedia myself. Explain it to me like I'm five, because I am five. Okay, then get ready for max knowledge about zero knowledge. A little bit simpler then. Zero knowledge proof is a mathematical technique where you can prove that you are right without even telling what you are right about. So kind of like proving that you know the secret without telling what the secret is. A. Sounds impossible. B. Still complicated. C. Why won't you give me an example? Okay, why not? So usually proving something or anything works by just showing it. So I want to prove to you that I have three pants. So here, here are three pants. I have proved it easy. But on the other hand, if I want to prove to you that I have a few school-related items without telling you what kind of items and how many, then that's a zero-knowledge proof. It's proving a thing without revealing anything about the thing other than its existence. Okay, then another example. Here's our friend, Cypher McBlockchain. Let's say a bad wizard, bad ghost, kidnapped our Cypher McBlockchain and made another Cypher, which is not real. Oh no, there are two of them now. Unfortunately, yes. And now there are two Cyphers, but only one of them is real. So to you, they are identical, but I know how to tell which one is real and which one is not. And I'll prove it to you. Hey, which one of you is real? We might have a problem here. I will prove to you that I know how to distinguish them, but not which is which. Okay, prove it. Let's take our Cyphers and I'm giving them to you. Now show one of them to me and then hide him. Then after hiding him, show one of them to me randomly. It could be the same one, it could be a different one. Just show one of them. And now what happens? If you show me a different one, I will tell you that's a different one, you switch them. If you show me the same, I will tell you, you're showing me the same one as previously. This will show you that I know how to tell the difference between the two. Okay, why does it matter and wouldn't it be just pure luck? Okay, fair question. But we can continue this as many times as you want. And each and every time, I will tell you if you are showing me the same sci-fi or if you had switched them. If we keep doing this many, many times, and every time I am right, then at some point you will be convinced that I indeed know the difference and can tell which Cypher McBlockchain is real and which one is not. Sounds too good to be true, but I can't help but agree. Magic. So, what needs to happen for something to be zero knowledge proof? For something to be considered zero-knowledge proof, there need to be three conditions met. Those conditions are completeness, soundness, and zero-knowledge. Which sounds smart, but let's break it down. So completeness is when I am proving something to you, and then at some point you say, I checked if you are right, and I'm in complete agreement with you, you do know the secret. A little bit more scientifically, it means that the test has to fully convince the verifier that you know what you claim you know. Also, some conditions need to be met that both parties, like you and me, need to be honest. So if you switch them, you don't lie to me. That You'll say that you switched them. So we need to be honest and we need to follow the rules of the game. And when we do that, then at some point you will be convinced and that means completeness. Soundness is like the other half of the coin. It means that for me, as a prover, it's impossible to cheat you. Same way that you were convinced that I am right. If I don't know the secret, at some point I will have no choice but to reveal that I'm wrong because I cannot keep guessing correctly forever. And we can make the chance that I'm lying 
as small as you want, smaller than any non-zero number with enough tries. And the last condition, zero knowledge, means actually a few things. The first condition is that if the prover is right, then verifier only knows that he's right. He doesn't know the secret. You, as a prover, have no more knowledge about my secret than you knew at the beginning. You only verified that what I claimed was actually true. And during the process of proving, no matter how long, no matter how many times, there is no additional information revealed. So you cannot guess or calculate the answer with more rounds of tests and more repetitions. And also another interesting characteristic of zero knowledge is that there is no leakage of information. So anybody spying on us, spying on our process of verifying and proving, cannot tell if the process is scripted or genuine. What they will hear is just like switched, didn't switch, switched, didn't switch, doesn't help them anything, they will know nothing. So the prover proves his claim to verifier and verifier only. Okay, and what can it be used for? In real life, I mean, where you or I could use it. Another great question. So there are quite a few real life use cases. The first one is blockchains and cryptocurrencies, especially recently. The main feature of zero knowledge proof is when privacy is of utmost importance. Traditionally on blockchains, everything is public. You can see a wallet address, a transaction address, and you can see everything. Who sent how much, to whom, how much do they have, and so on. That's one of the features of the blockchain, but that's also one of the problems if you care about privacy. And there are many blockchains and cryptocurrencies and smart words like ZK Snarks, ZK Starks, and we will be going deeper into that later on, not for today. Another real life use case is secure authentication. It's when password is not enough. Password is good for something simple, but for something that needs to be of utmost security, passwords are too easy, too short, too insecure. Furthermore, passwords can be compromised in the database, for example, can be guessed, can be brute forced. And even when passwords are really, really good, they are susceptible to man in the middle attacks where your password is just intercepted. With zero knowledge proof authentication, it's not possible to do. And there are already multiple security protocols that already use zero knowledge proofs for authentication. A few more use cases is like finance or insurance where it's important to verify some information, like for example, that you qualify for insurance, that you qualify for loan, you have enough money, but you don't want to tell how much money you have. You don't want to tell what you do with your money. You just want to prove that what you have is within certain range that qualifies you for what you want. And some banks already use that for their customers to be able to prove to the bank that the number that they're claiming is within the range that the bank needs it to be. That's it. Voting systems is another use case. It allows to first vote anonymously and second to verify that your vote was included in the final tally. And the last example, an interesting one about machine learning, zero knowledge proofs allow the owner of a machine learning algorithm to convince others about the results of the model without revealing any information about the model. If it's so magical, why is it not everywhere yet? Yeah, you're right. It's not all rosy, at least yet. The first challenge is while it's as close to zero as possible, it's still not zero, not 100% guarantee that your claim is correct. And while we can get as close to zero as we want or as it's mathematically possible, it's still not zero. And in this way, zero knowledge proofs aren't actually proofs in a strictly mathematical sense. And another big problem is computational intensity. Algorithms use a lot of resources as they require many interactions between the proven verifiers. So what we did in a couple of minutes is done tens, hundreds, millions, billions of times, and that costs money. This makes zero knowledge proof technology 
unsuitable for slow or mobile devices with the current level of technology. Good stuff! I want to know more! Give me more! Give me more! If you want to know more about ZK Everything, subscribe, go to Twitter, find QuickNote, follow QuickNote. We will have more videos, guides, articles about zero knowledge, whatever. ZK Snarks, ZK Starks, interactive, non-interactive, ZK Rollups, optimistic Rollups, the differences, the similarities, the advantages, the disadvantages. We will have it all. And by the way, this is the real CypherMac blockchain. This one is not real. This is blocky MacSypherman. I'm Radek. I'm a developer advocate at QuickNote. And I'm Bafikorn. I'm Ethereum investor. See you soon. soon.